Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, February 6th, and it's cold. Uh, I think it was 12 degrees Fahrenheit when I got up this morning. But, we've had no snow. We got rain for a couple days and it stayed in the 40s, and then the rain ended and the temperature dropped. So, it's, it's weird. I'll, I'll have to find this image and show it to you sometime, but there was like total snowfall as of right now in the northeastern area and there's this like little circle in the middle where there's been very little to any and I'm in that little circle but <laughs> everybody else is just getting slammed so I feel for you guys uh hope you're staying warm and uh you know safe and comfortable and not over shoveling or anything and Winter still has uh, some fight left in it for sure, so, um, you know, the rolls will probably be released at some point in the near future, and if not, next year. So, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bragging. <laughs> so today, uh, I've got some haunted bookshop in my Briar Spirit uh, Janus pipe. And I wanted to talk today about... Uh, my weight loss journey. A couple people have asked about it. Actually, several people have asked about it. And I've got to admit, I didn't initially want to do this video, and, and I'll explain why, um, and then I'll explain why I've decided to do it. So, i got to start off by telling you some personal stuff about me and, and, and weight, uh, because I have struggled with weight my whole life. You know, I was the little kid that... Uh, you know, we went to Catholic school, so you had to wear a uniform. And every year it was this, this horrible ordeal where I'd have to be taken to these um, special stores to, to try on husky pants and, you know, try to find something that would fit me. Uh, I never, just just never had control of my weight, even, even going back to, to being in grade school. Um, so this is something that's kind of haunted me my whole life, with one notable exception. Um, right around my junior year of high school, I just suddenly lost a bunch of weight. I didn't do anything different. I just suddenly was no longer heavy. And that lasted me through quite a, quite a bit of time, like through, through college, basically, um, which was great you know, in terms of a social life and stuff, <laughs> it was perfect. I'm guessing my metabolism changed and that's what we caused it. But I didn't change, you know, I didn't change my lifestyle. I didn't change any, any of the reasons why I was overweight for all those years. And so eventually I guess my metabolism shifted back and certainly during graduate school, I started to steadily gain weight. Um, and that continued until quite recently, and we'll get back into quite recently soon. Now, having lived that uh, for my whole of, uh, well, maybe maybe 50 of my 56 years, because not many people are pointing out that a five-year-old is fat, but, you know, I've, I've heard all the advice that I care to hear. Uh, you know, I've been told, eat more vegetables, yeah. eat salads. Um, I've been told you should try paleo, you should try keto, you should, you know, you need to exercise more. Uh, why don't you just start walking? Uh, drink more water, drink less water. Uh, when I was a kid, my grandmother used to tell me that I drank too much water and that's why I was fat. Uh, you know, which is insane, but she she didn't know any better. She she was trying to help. Eat less sweets. I don't eat sweets. I, I don't like sweet stuff. Never, never had a problem with that. You know, I've heard every bit of advice that, that I really care to hear. And the truth is, nothing has ever worked. Ever. I mean, I've tried it. I've tried in earnest. So, I... You know, I went through the whole cancer thing, and I've talked about that a bunch of times, and, you know, that kind of messed me up in a lot of ways, physically. Um, 
I was I was much more. Um, it's the word I'm looking for: sedentary, at, during and after that than I had been previously, and my weight started to increase further. And it got to the point uh, where, and you, you guys that have been watching me for a while don't need this picture, but I thought I'd throw it in here just for effect. Yeah, I was uh, getting pretty heavy. Um, this picture was taken when my wife and I were vacationing in California a few years ago. And uh, you can see I was, uh, I was not exactly the, uh, the picture of health there, and certainly not a slim and trim fellow. But that had been life, you know, I, I just, I was used to it, that's how I lived, and, you know, that, that was it. My weight ranged, you know, I can remember when I first crossed the 200 pound mark and thought, oh, you know, got to do something about this, and then it was the 250 pound mark, and then, you know, came the health issues and all that, and it, it creeped up and creeped up, and in November, uh, first half of November of 2020, uh, and I'm not blaming lockdowns and all that stuff. That, that didn't change me at all. I, you know, didn't, didn't change my level of activity, didn't change my diet. It had nothing to do with that. But uh, around November of, of 2020, early November 2020, I got on the scale and I weighed in at 296 pounds. And that's the closest I've ever been to 300. And that that scared me. Uh, didn't want to be 300. That's a lot of pounds. And I just didn't want that to happen. And I never thought it would happen. I, I, you know, I knew I was going to be a heavy guy, but I never thought I'd be a 300 pound heavy guy. By the way, I'm, I'm a five foot seven. So, you know, 300 pounds on a five foot seven guy is a lot. My BMI was well into the morbidly obese range. So that's kind of the, the story of, you know, where I got to. And the reason I didn't want to make this video, for uh, one of the reasons, is that I don't want to be one of those people that gave me advice over all those years. You know, I, I know that some of you guys, and, and the reason I do want to make the video is that some guys have said, you know, I'm trying to lose weight too. Maybe what you have to say will help. And maybe it will. And that's a good reason to do this. But I don't want to be one of those folks handing out advice because every single person is different. And I learned that the hard way. What works for you wouldn't work for me. What works for me may not work for you. Um, so you got to figure this out. You know, you got to find your own path in this. The most important thing is that you commit to it and you not get discouraged. And we'll, we'll talk about not getting discouraged uh, a bit uh, in, in, a, in a moment. So that's kind of the background for what I did, for our, or where I was when I decided something was going to change. It was mid-November 2020, and I said, this has got to change. And I thought, okay, I'm going to start eating healthy. And I went, oh, and I've done that so many times. I, you know. So I, I went and I, was, I had used my fitness pal in the past, which is a little phone app. Well, it's not a little phone app. It's a phone app that lets you track your calories and, and you know, figure out how much you're eating each day and how much you're burning and exercise. And I had for a long time known that, you know, the secret to weight loss is really quite simple. You burn more calories than you consume, or so I thought. So I thought, okay, I'm going to put my fitness pal back on my phone for the third time, and we'll start doing that. So I started just well, let's see if there's anything better out there and was looking for weight loss apps. And I saw uh, this Noom app, N-O-O-M, Noom. You've probably seen commercials for this. There have been a lot of commercials for it. Um, it's a pretty popular weight loss program. And I looked into it and I, I didn't look into it. I looked at the app and then I looked at their website. I didn't like do any research on other people's uh, results or anything. two-week free trial and you get to track your calories you get to track your exercise so I thought, okay let's you know let's try something different for two weeks and see how it goes I had no intention of paying for it you know I just wanted to try it out for two weeks and then I'd probably go try something else out for two weeks so I found myself 
right before Thanksgiving, my favorite holiday, my favorite holiday to, to overeat, um, on a diet. Uh, shouldn't say a diet. I found myself trying to control my eating in a way that I had never done before using this Noom program. And two weeks passed and I had lost a couple pounds and I thought, yeah, I like this. I like this approach and I'll explain it. So I wound up investing. Uh, it was, if I remember right, it was $250 for an eight month program. And I'm actually in the second eight month program now. So I've, I've paid that amount twice. Best money I've ever spent. Now, again, this program might not work for you. That's one of the good things about the two week trial. You know, you get the, you get a feel for it, but it worked really well for me. So I'm going to tell you about it. So first off, it, there's, there's a lot to it. And if you watch the commercials, you hear, you hear people say things like, you know, they say it's psychology. I just know it works. Uh, I don't know how it works, but it does. And I got to admit, that's kind of true. Now, if you've watched me for a while, you know my background. I'm, I'm a scientist. I'm, I'm actually uh, in the area of, of neuroscience, and I have a lot of training in psychology. So I, I, I went through this program knowing that they were playing with my head. knowing they were trying to change me and seeing how they were doing it and it still worked and i can't tell you how it worked i can just tell you that it, it, it did so there are three main sort of pillars to the numa approach in my opinion i'm not i'm by the way i'm this is in, in no way associated with Numa. i'm not getting you know anything back from them i'm just a very satisfied customer and i'm just passing along the information and this is my opinion of the program. It's not their official, you know, explanation of the program. The three main pillars, in my opinion, the first is understanding caloric density. And this is really simple. How dense is the food you're eating in terms of calories? The way you calculate it is you take the number of calories and what you're going to eat. You divide it by the weight in grams and you get a number. Uh, if that number is greater than three, that's probably something you don't want to eat a lot of. If that number is less than one, that's something you want to enjoy as much as you can. And if it's between the two, you want to eat it in moderation. This leads to a color system where Noom has red, yellow, and green foods. And, you know, you, 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 you make something, you say, oh, this, is this red or green? Or, you know, uh, green foods you can eat until you burst. Uh, now you do get a set number of calories per day, and that comes from what's your height and what's your goal. Um, but those calories get distributed across these different categories of foods. And you get a budget for how much of the red food you can eat. The red foods are the highly calorically dense. So, for example, butter would be a red food. Uh, yellow foods, you get a larger budget, and those are things you want to eat in moderation. <clears throat> Lean meats, uh, you know, chicken, fish, uh, pork, and then uh, and other things. And then you've got green foods, you know, vegetables, uh, raw vegetables, cooked vegetables, salads, uh, uh, whole grain breads, whole grain pasta is actually green. Uh, you fill out the rest of your calories with those things. Why this works is really interesting. So I've tried to diet before where I would say, okay, butter's bad. I'm not going to eat any butter. Butter, in case you don't know, tastes good. Um, it makes things that don't taste good, taste good. <laughs> so when you remove it from your diet, you actually make it harder to maintain that diet. What this program teaches is butter's not bad, it's just calorically dense. So if you're going to use it, you can use some butter, but use it to cook some vegetables. So you're getting that flavor, but you're getting it on something that's not calorically dense, so you can eat more of it, 
and you're full. Whereas if you just take butter and put it on a piece of bread or toast, that's probably not going to fill you as much as a big bowl of sautéed vegetables with some butter. So that's the idea of caloric density. It's, it's remarkably simple, but a bit groundbreaking for me because I always thought, you know, oh, I can't eat a cupcake. That's bad. You know, I, I never thought of it as, and I don't like cupcakes anyway, but I never thought of it as you can, you can have your cupcakes. You just got to pair them with less calorically dense foods, less calorically dense. So that's, that was the first part. The second part is, is all the psychology. And <clears throat> I couldn't in a three hour video begin to go through everything that I learned from this program uh, about myself. And that's really, I think the core of how it works. You're learning, not psychology, you know, you don't have to understand how it works, but you're learning about you and how you see food and how you see exercise and how you see your life. You know, where do you want to be? How do you want to be different? What, what is your goal? How are you going to get to that goal? How does every minute of your day lead you to that goal? You know, this kind of stuff, but it's done gently. You read 10 minutes a day and sometimes it's quizzes. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, what, myths or, or truths and you know you try to decide and then you get the answer you know little little not games but you know it's fun they're, they're written very well they're written in a very conversational manner along with this there's coaching um, there's a group that you belong to and, and the group is small it's like maybe 10 or 12 people so you get to know people um, all of this is done through text so uh, there's no video. There's nothing like that. It's just, you know, sending messages to the group saying, you know, I had a rough day today. I, I ate a cake. Yeah. Uh, and then they all come back and say, ah, oh, we've done that. You know. uh, the, the coaching itself is great because they check in once a week and just kind of give you some motivation. Uh, you know, you never fail. They never say, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Or that's a shame you did that. It's more about uh, how are you going to do better next week? Very good, very good, solid, motivational stuff. And the psychology teaches you things like there's 12 forms of hunger. I couldn't list them. Right? I really couldn't. But I know now that there's different types of hunger. And I know that, you know, if it's 9 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, I'm watching TV and suddenly I think, gee, I'm hungry. I'm probably just doing that because I would habitually grab something to snack on while I watch TV. Uh, I know that if I get up and walk around a little bit, get a drink of water, that'll pass. And I don't need to eat anything. And I'm happier that I'm not eating anything. Because now I'm eating to live rather than, you know, sorry to be cliche about it, rather than living to eat. I'm, I'm eating because it fuels my body. Um, I enjoy what I eat. I greatly enjoy it, but I don't eat it just for the pleasure of eating. I eat it for the pleasure of eating plus the fact that it is nourishing me. And that's the main thing that I learned uh, in terms of the psychological side of things. The third pillar is movement. And I'm intentionally not saying exercise. Now, exercise is important. And they do say, you know, take walks, do, you know, do what you can. But they really stress this idea of movement. That's more important than exercise. You know, the truth is you can, and I've done this, you know, I've got a treadmill, I've run on a treadmill. Uh, you run on a treadmill for 20 minutes. You burn maybe 120, 130 calories, something like that. At least I do at the rate that I was running. Um, you put a tablespoon of salad dressing on your salad, that's 120 calories. So do you really lose weight through exercise? You don't. You don't. Exercise is important for your body. It's healthy. It builds muscle. Muscle burns calories. Even when you're sitting still, it burns calories. Movement is important because it helps. It aids in digestion. It builds muscle. It keeps your circulation going. It keeps you from having all sorts of joint problems. You need to move. That's much more important than 
walking five miles, running five miles, doing push-ups, doing pull-ups, whatever you might do, going to the gym for an hour. Doing those things is great, and, and, and you should do them if you can. I've never been a big fan of that. You know, I like walking. I used to walk a lot, but I've had these knee problems in, in, over the past couple of years, and that's kind of limited my walking. This time of year, I'm not, I'm not an Everett Young. I'm not going to go out and walk in minus 20 degree weather. Uh, God bless you, Everett. I'm glad you can do it. Uh, I'm not a gym guy. I did join a gym a couple of years ago. It helped. Um, it helped. I was feeling better, but it, it was not something I was motivated to do. Uh, so after a couple of months, I kind of fell away from it. But I do like to move. Um, I talked before about Qigong, uh, this uh, martial art, internal martial art, very similar to Tai Chi. Um, been doing that for, I guess, year and a half now, uh, every day. Haven't been doing it recently because of my surgery. I need to not do it, but hopefully we'll get back to it very, very soon. It makes me feel good. It energizes me. It stretches. It, it, uh, it provides lubrication to the joints because you're moving them. It does all sorts of good things for you. It takes 30 minutes out of my day. I do it in the morning first thing, but I enjoy it. Uh, my watch has an alarm on it every hour or so. It'll say, hey, it's time to get moving. And if I'm sitting down here working during the day and that alarm goes off, I'll go refill my coffee cup. Uh, maybe I'll go for a quick walk around the neighborhood if the weather's nice. Uh, maybe I'll just stand up and walk in place if I'm, if I'm in a meeting. Um, but I do that every hour. That has really changed me. And, you know, if, if you're a guy who's, who finds it difficult to exercise, try that. Just try challenging yourself that every hour I'm going to get up and walk around. You know, if you, if you, if you, the reason getting a cup of coffee is significant is that I work down here in the basement and the coffee's up on the, the first floor, so I have to go up a flight of steps. Little things, like if you got a bathroom on the first floor and you, you, you're watching TV at night and you can make that trip up the steps to the second floor to use the bathroom, you might choose to do that. Um, you know, just challenge yourself to move more. So those are the three main sort of what I'm calling pillars of the doom. Caloric density, psychology, understanding yourself, I should say, and move. I know it sounds ridiculously simple, but that's that's what I did. And I want to show you this because I'm, I'm, I'm quite proud of this. So there again is me a, a few years back. Uh, this is the the weight loss chart between the day I started on Noom and my one year anniversary on Noom. And you can see it is basically a straight line and it's very close to 300 and down at the bottom you see the goal there of 180. Uh, my ultimate goal was 160 but you would, I would set the goal in 20 pound increments. So my first goal was actually uh, 280 and every time I hit a goal I would then add 20 pounds and you know keep marching down that. One of the things the program has you do is get weighed daily. And this graph shows you why. It's hard to see because there's so many points on it, but there's little fluctuations up and down in there. You know, you I'd get on the scale one day and I overnight gained three pounds. How is that possible? Well if you're just getting on the scale once a week and you have to catch you happen to catch that three pound day, you're going to get discouraged. But if you do it every day, you start to understand that you're bouncing up and down, but you're trending downward all the way. And you can see how well this worked over the course of one year. Um, I, I, you know, there's a little bump in there. Uh, don't know exactly what caused that, but you know, overall it's, it was very, very consistent. And uh, that's motivating, you know, to see that trend occurring over over a month even though you're seeing the daily ups and downs is is motivational now in terms of where I'm at now uh, as I said the goal was 260 that's based on BMI basal metabolic index uh, 
I'm now uh, about 170 and I've gotten to the point where it's starting to not look good on me if I if I lose very much more weight and I need to build muscle so I've switched now I'm still tracking my weight every day and it's interesting it has now leveled out right around 170 I've been able to maintain that uh, I've increased my caloric intake I've increased some of the the uh, calorically dense foods to help me get more calories uh, added protein and you know trying to just Pay attention, keep it around 170, and work on strength training now. Now, that's real exercise. That, that I can't do just by getting up and walking around. So that's the next challenge for me. But I think it's maintainable. I, I Based on what I've seen so far, uh, you know, I've been pretty well plateaued at 170 for about a month and a half now. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy keeping it there. Uh, the scale is just a number it's a useful metric for tracking things but it doesn't really mean anything the, the, the what, what matters is how you feel and something else I learned about myself and I feel really good basal metabolic index is used by doctors they love it because it's a number and they can say hey you're in this range you should be in that range but it really is meaningless um, one doctor pointed this out to me uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, you know this guy, I'm sure. Uh, he is, according to Basal Metabolic Index, he's morbidly obese because he has so much muscle mass that he weighs in a range for his height, puts him into the morbidly obese category. Obviously, he's not obese. You know? So these numbers don't really mean anything, but you can use them to kind of guide you and say, am I going in the right direction? And then the question is, how do I feel? So that's it. Um, again, I know it sounds simple, but it kind of was. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of hard work. You know, I had to, had to learn a lot about myself. I had to be disciplined in eating. You know, there were times when I was in situations visiting relatives, going out to restaurants where I had to make choices that I didn't really want to make. Uh, there were times when I was in those situations where I made choices that I knew were wrong, but I knew I was doing it. And I said to myself, well, I'm going to do this today. I'll get back on track tomorrow. And, and that's what's important. You don't do it and say, ah, oh, I've ruined everything. I'm never going to get get back on track tomorrow so that's that's my weight loss journey uh, I hope that's helpful to someone out there but again I want to stress that it's it's not easy it, well it's easy when it works but it takes dedication it takes commitment it takes work um, and what worked for me may not work for you Everybody's different. Everybody's got to find their own path. But the one thing I can tell you is that I feel so much better. I have so much more energy. I just feel better in my own skin. You know, I, I, I feel healthy. Uh, I feel like I'm able to do things that I wasn't able to do a year ago. And that's a good thing. So if you're in a situation like I was, I want, I want to encourage you to try to find something that works for you. Um, if you don't find it, that doesn't mean you're a bad person or you're doing something wrong. It just means you got to try the next thing. You, you got to keep trying and eventually you'll get there. And if anybody wants to talk more about this, if anybody ever wants to you know, discuss it in more detail, I'd be happy to do that through email or even a phone call if you want. You know how to get in touch with me. Uh, again, I didn't really want to do this. I hope I didn't put any of you guys off uh, with it. I'm really not trying to preach about it. I just wanted to share what worked for me. And uh, wish you guys that are trying to walk down this path all the best of luck. Uh, you'll get there. So, one closing 
uh, thing. I know this is going on for, for a bit of time. Um, this coming Friday, we are going to be doing, we hope, the Super Bowl spectacular with a live tasting of Tim Fournier's I Hate Roger Goodell. Now, the problem is UPS is not being kind to us, and I have not yet gotten the tobacco. Tim sent it in plenty of time. It just hasn't arrived in my hands yet. So we might have to bump this a week, and i got to talk to the guys that are involved, and hopefully they will be okay with that. Uh, it's looking very, very dicey right now. If I don't have the tobacco out the door by the end of the day on Monday, I'm going to bump this up a week. And that'll be a shame because it'll happen after the Super Bowl, but hey, life is life. So, not sure what's happening Friday. I'm still hoping that we're going to have the I Hate Roger Goodell tasting, but we'll see what happens in the in the next, uh, well, the next 48 hours, I suppose. And I'll keep you posted. All right, guys, this has gone on a long time. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you, some of you find it helpful. And again, happy to, to chat with any of you about this if it would be useful to you. I hope your Sunday is a wonderful one. Have a good Sunday, a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.